Hi everyone, my name is Talon Anderson. I'm a student here at KCOM, just finished the master's program. I'll be a first year medical student. I'm also a member of the Apple Genius team, and basically my job is to help you learn how to use the iPad throughout your medical education. In this video, we'll be looking at two apps that we use here at ATSU, iCatcher and Good Player. So first, we're gonna look at iCatcher. And that app looks like this right here. We're gonna go ahead and open that app up right now. And it always pops up, they'll have different tips and things like that you can look at. I'll just dismiss it for now and close down this. Um, we'll go here to podcasts. So this app allows you to listen to the podcast at multiple speeds. And so I'm going to show you how to import those podcasts into iCatcher and then play them. So first you'll need to go to your email. Every semester they'll send out emails with the podcast links attached. And so I have that opened up. I'm going to jump over. And so you can see here we have all the different links for the various classes that are being taught in this semester. So I'll select any of them that I'd like, hold down, and then hit copy. Now we can go back to iCatcher. And to add a podcast, you're going to click on the orange icon up here at the top. Now this will ask you to then paste in the URL that you've copied. So I hold down, I'll click paste. Now the trick here is sometimes with this app, you need to check and go back to the very first. You can hold down, you want to go back to the very beginning of this app and make sure that it reads the HTTP semicolon backslash backslash echo. Sometimes when you copy and paste, you will get something else extra inside there like a Google or something along those lines when you copy and paste. Make sure that it reads just that in order to bring in just that podcast in order for it to play correctly. I'll go ahead and click continue. And now I have all these options. We can jump down to the full screen. So now we have all these options basically of what we can look at and do. And so you can see at the very top says episodes to import. You can choose all of them and then what happens after it says download. And this is where you can select how many episodes you want to actually have downloaded onto your iPad. I usually say zero. And that way I actually don't take up any room as far as storage goes on the iPad, but I can simply stream the podcast each episode that I want at a time. Once you've set those initial features, you can click subscribe. And now it's going to show, it says you're now subscribed. So I can go ahead and just dismiss that. And I can see here's my podcast. If I go in and click on that, here are all the different podcasts have been uploaded thus far. And to play one, you simply click on it. And it said, I don't want to download it. For me, I just want to stream it rather than actually listening to it. If you want to listen to it later on and you won't be connected to internet or if you have a 3G or hotspot, go ahead and download it to your device and then you can delete it afterwards. I'll click stream. And it'll begin to stream the specific lecture that I've selected. Now to change how fast you're going, down here in the left hand corner you can see 1.5x. This way you can change the speed simply by clicking. I can go two times, I can go slower, regular, and then 1.25, 1.5, and then two times as fast listening to lectures. And you can jump forward, backwards, 30 seconds, back 30 seconds, you have the pause, things like that. So it's pretty straightforward and basic. Um, once it's done streaming, it'll ask you then if you want to delete it or keep it on the iPad. So that's iCatcher, kind of in a nutshell, allows you to look at everything um, and you can go from there basically. It's pretty straightforward, really nice in the fact that you can listen to lectures faster or slower, um, whatever you need to throughout, throughout that lecture. If there's something you want to catch or missed, it's nice to, to go back, change the speed and pause. The second application that we're going to look at is Good Player. Now Good Player is an app that allows you to watch videos. Um, the iPad only supports certain formats, and this app actually allows you to look at various videos no matter what their um, background is. And so to get an app, in order to get a video, what you're going to need to do is down here in the right-hand corner, you see this arrow, box in the arrow, and that brings you to a list of different things. For the most part, a lot of the videos, at least that we've watched, are usually on Blackboard. And so you'll need to use the web application, go to the web, download, and browser. And that basically just pulls you up into a web browser on site. I'll wait for a second for it to load. And then from here you can go to the Blackboard site. Okay, so as you're going to the various sites, this will continue to pop up 
it's asking the app itself is thinking that you want to play a video on that page and gives you those options. Just click anywhere else, it'll go away. And then go ahead and enter your username and password for Blackboard. And then once in Blackboard, you'll find your classes. You can select whatever class where you may find that specific video. We'll just click on a random one. Now again, when there is video actually uploaded into here, you're going to see that same menu that we saw earlier pop up and ask you if you want to play something specifically and you can either stream, download, or just watch watch the video. That's what they want to cancel out of it. And basically you'll select, basically yeah, I like prefer again streaming it, that way you don't have to worry about saving anything down to the iPad, taking up storage space, or if you need to watch it later on, have it as a review or you won't be connected to Wi-Fi, there's that download option again available. And those are those two apps. Basically, if you have any questions or concerns, please ask somebody from the Apple Genius team to help you or the help desk. They're always there to help you out.